The story of Glow Europe starts with a young man, Colin Tilsley, the son of missionary parents to India. Colin was sent home to England to finish high school and university. Every Christian movement usually began with one person. Colin Tilsley, who was the founder of GLOW in Australia and in New Zealand, he came to the United Kingdom and with his vision, which was to reach the cities of Europe through literature, that vision ignited the, in the heart of Robert Kilpatrick, who was the first person in GLOW. Two events changed the course of Colin's life. First, he met Cynthia, an Australian nurse who was on an extended trip to the UK, and they decided their future would be together. Secondly, Colin attended the Billy Graham Haringey Crusade in 1954 and became convinced about the importance of mass evangelism. Colin went to Australia to start married life, but his vision for mission continued. His response was to begin the work of GLOW so as to mobilize people for evangelism. The very first GLOW team consisted of 10 people who went to Madras in India for two years to sell gospel packets. During their time, they sold half a million, and while they were there, Colin continued to recruit others. He also established a training center in Australia so that prospective missionaries could be prepared for service. Having begun the work of GLOW in Australia, Colin and Cynthia, along with their growing family, then moved to New Zealand, where they established GLOW there also. Then in 1971, they came to the UK for the same purpose. They stayed for three years before going home to Australia, where, tragically, Colin developed motor neuron disease. During his short illness, he continued to travel mobilizing people for mission, but died the 23rd of March, 1981, at the age of 46. The work of GLOW Europe was formally established in 1974 in Motherwell, with the acquiring of an old and disused Church of Scotland building. A committee was set up to oversee the work. The original team consisted of Robert and Eileen Kilpatrick, John and Cathy Spears, Fred and Ruth Kelling in Motherwell, and David and Joy Prosser in South Wales. When he came to Scotland, we had a rally in the church at Selkirk Street, and he was the speaker. And on the steps of Selkirk Street, he said to me directly, we need you in the work. Robert and John worked together doing missions in local churches. John's wife, Kathy, also got involved by starting up the Glow coffee shop. As Glow developed, John would become the first European coordinator for Glow. In 1975, Fred Kelling began the Glow training center so that Christians could be upskilled and prepared for Christian service. Meanwhile, one of the first ministries to get established was short-term mission teams that went across Europe as well as the UK. Some of these teams were large, for example, two teams of 50 people that went to Rome in 1975 to mark Holy Year. This team distributed literature and did street evangelism. When Ray and Eunice Corston joined the work, they developed the training program, renaming it the Training for Service Course. As far as changes are concerned, I was very concerned that the students would uh, participate in a variety of activities uh, to increase their, their awareness of the needs of Christian ministry and um, that we should build up a, a courage in the students. We were not too um, hard on the academic side because uh, I felt it was important to, that every student should feel uh, welcome and fulfilled in, in what they did. In due course, long-term missionaries such as Sam and Andrea Gibson were sent out. Initially, most missionaries came from the UK, but in time, national workers began to join GLOW. This world still needs to hear of Christ and uh, he is still building his church throughout the world and I think that's always exciting to hear about and that comes as a result of mission, doesn't it? Whether it's by nationals or by people moving across the globe to serve him in different areas. One of the first cities that would benefit from a GLOW resident team 
was Marseille in the south of France, where churches were planted, and the work continues to this day. Resourcing the church in Scotland and beyond also became a priority. The Glow Bookshop, which began its existence in Hamilton, moved to the Glow Centre and continued to grow. Key to the bookshop's success were Jeff and Janet Rustin, who both ran the bookshop at different times. The wonderful thing for me is to see how the work has grown over the years. So I well remember when we drove up out January on a snowy day. They didn't even expect us when we arrived because of the weather. And the church, derelict almost, windows boarded up where they've been smashed and so on. And that's how we started. And the old BB bee, bee hut and all that sort of thing. And to see how the work has developed over the years it's really been quite thrilling. Jeff also ran a book depot on behalf of book distributor STL for a number of years. The depot not only raised important finance for GLOW, but it also connected GLOW with around 120 other Christian bookshops across Scotland and the north of England. I ran the bookshop for 19 years. Right from the start, we had a great team of um, volunteers that used to help come in different days. But once we got the computers in, they weren't so keen to get involved in that side of it. So that was really when we took on, um, you know, paid staff and extra staff. And the Lord continued to bless it, and, uh, and I moved into computerising the accounts for GLOW. Despite all the diversification, Glow Europe continued to maintain its core purposes. These were mobilizing Christians for mission, training and equipping them, sending them to key locations and supporting them on the field. The work of Glow Europe has continued to grow and is now a multicultural mission family of 80 people serving all over the UK, as well as countries such as diverse as France, Italy, Republic of Ireland, Romania, Albania, and Hungary. Everyone in GLOW has a heart to bring the gospel to people across Europe, and that vision has remained a vital part of GLOW's DNA. Europe is not only one of the most challenging mission fields in the world, it also has some of the greatest spiritual needs. We give God thanks for the 50 years of help and blessing we have received, but would ask you to continue to partner with us as we try to reach this needy continent for Christ. Mm -hmm.